This is the second part of the database uh, presentation. Um, here I'm mostly going to talk about data types and some of the more esoteric things about databases. So databases use many of the same data types we see in programming. We kind of talked about those last week. It is also one of the reasons why we talked about programming last week instead of databases. It's not really a surprise that databases use many of the same data types since people were programming long before they were databases. So there are a bunch of numeric types, and one thing we didn't talk about last week are signed numbers versus unsigned numbers. Now, and it's most basic that essentially means do you allow negatives or not? And an unsigned value, it goes from zero uh, and up. In a signed number, you can go into negatives. So, you know, negative something to negative something. One of the fundamental data types in databases is the int. It of course, stands for integer. We saw those last week. Now, in MySQL, which is what we're talking about, the d range for a signed int, that's, that is one that allows negative numbers, is from negative 2,147,483,648 to 2,142,483,647. Unsigned, it goes from zero to four billion two hundred ninety four million nine hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred ninety five so you see with an unsigned int you can have much larger numbers now the reason you would want to use an unsigned is if you have something that is never going to go into negatives if you're storing something that you know will never go negative say you're storing say you're storing like calories consumed and you're storing calories burned in another table then you know you're never going to go over or if you're storing like the absolute value of something then you would want to just you know you may as well use an unsigned int the default is signed because most of the time if you're using an int it can go both ways the next two de data types i want to talk about are decimals and floats now typically you use a float to represent decimal numbers so you know some number of numbers decimal points and more numbers um, Right, typically um, a float is the only one you'll see, and you use that to represent decimal numbers. It's a floating point. It's basically this point. They call it floating point because it can move around. You know, you could have any number in front of or behind. In MySQL and most databases, there are two. There's decimal and there's float. Decimal is the more traditional one that we're used to, where you can have sort of any number before the decimal point and any number of numbers after the decimal point, up to 64 total digits. So you can represent pretty large floating point numbers. This is sort of a, a system limitation. Some will allow bigger and this is kind of a limitation of MySQL. Depending on the system and the platform it's running on, um, this value could be larger, but in MySQL, that's what we're looking at. This is the case. It's up to 64 digits, which is a big number. Now, the difference between decimal and float is that float is a specific type of decimal. You have one digit before the decimal point and then a bunch of digits after. There's a limitation on the number of digits you can have after, but it's system specific. There is a limit, but it's not a hard and fast limit, and it's not like something like 64 digits. It's based on a couple of things. The next one is Boolean. Now, MySQL treats Booleans as a numeric. It treats it as a one or a zero. It's a single bit. We talked about that a little bit at the very beginning of the course when we talked about binary. And here you use a Boolean for things like, you can think of it like if you're looking at a web form and there's a checkbox, that's a Boolean. It's a zero or a one. This shows up a lot in web programming. That's one of the reasons why MySQL makes a point of having a Boolean data type. Next, I want to look at date and time. These are a huge, huge part of databases because you oftentimes want to know when data was entered or when somebody signed up for an account or when somebody placed an order. The big ones are date, timestamp, and date time. And they also break down into year, time, and things like that. But this kind of gives you the whole view of what these formats look like. Now, date is just what it sounds like. It's a year, month, day, and it goes in this format. It's four-digit year, two-digit month, two-digit day. So, you know, if you picked an arbitrary date in November, say November 13th, you 2013, you'd put 20131113. That's how you represent that. Now, this may look a little familiar because I tend to write my dates this way because of this. Then we have the timestamp and the date time. 
These may look exactly the same because they kind of are. The main difference between timestamp and date time is in how they're used. You'll use a timestamp for something like um, login time. Um, you'd also sort of use a timestamp for things like order data. Like say your Amazon, somebody places an order, you would use a timestamp. So if you have an order and you want like order placed or order modified information, that would get a timestamp. Date time is more like a birthday. Timestamp is more like a sale. So a timestamp is used to record sort of reoccurring events. And a date time is like date time would be when you enrolled in college. Timestamp would be when you like get a grade in a class. It's like that's when it was modified. This is sort of to record modified date. This would be used to record created date. So that's sort of the other way to think about it is date time represents a date, kind of like you find on a calendar and timestamp represents a well-defined point in time. Timestamp would deal more with universal time, date time, would use more like time zone specific. Don't worry about it too much. The important thing is this shows you the format. So you can see it has the same year, month, day format of the date, but it also throws in hour, minute, second, and then sort of nanoseconds up to a pretty big precision. This is pretty much always in 24 hour time, which is the time I prefer. Um, primarily because there were too many instances of me setting my alarm for, you know, 6 p.m. instead of 6 a.m. and I'd miss meetings. Um, so I, I like 24-hour time because it's really hard to confuse 6 and 18. So yeah, that's just, it's, you know, two-digit hour. So if it's 3 in the morning, it's 0, 3. If it's 3 in the afternoon, it's 15. 0 to 59, 0 to 59. And then nanoseconds or milliseconds rather so these you know obviously rack up pretty fast so this is just something to see so you know sort of what the format looks like string types pretty much the only one to be concerned with in um, MySQL and databases in general is the varchar um, it's variable character is what it stands for. This is the same thing as an array, essentially. The main difference between this and like a string in a programming language is in a database you have to specify how big the row is. That's what this number denotes. It's how many characters can fit in that particular element. This is a big part of database optimization. Basically, if you think about it, if you have 2 million rows, each with a 255 character that's 4 billion, 80 million bytes. That's 4 gigabytes. Now multiply that by however many columns, varchar columns you have. Now you might think, well, 2 million rows, well, who's going to have that kind of information? Think about Amazon. Think about a school. Currently, I believe Channel Islands has something like 5,000 students enrolled. That's currently. They also have to store records going back to when they started. So, you know, if it's 5,000 students every semester, each semester creates sort of replicated data so you have to be concerned about this if you're working with databases uh, and I mean also think about this think about every person that orders something from Amazon think about every car in California this information is stored in databases so if you can you know instead of using 255 characters if you're storing a name make it a hundred characters because a first name is probably not going to be 255 characters long uh, that can cause problems for example um, my name has turned into clink and be numerous times because it wasn't you know the database field wasn't long enough to store the whole thing so you have to make it within reasonable constraints and just as a, a aside there's a lot of debate over how this is pronounced I pronounce it varchar because of the CH sound to me that makes it look like chair or choice a lot of people pronounce it varkar I don't like that I guess it makes sense because you don't say character you say character but it's it's a that's another of the many many things that people debate in computer science Personally, I like Varchar, but there's no right or wrong here. It's not like SQL and SQL. Which, speaking of, there are a lot of different flavors of database. Uh, there's MySQL, PostgreSQL, PLSQL, Oracle SQL, MSSQL, and the main difference is they add functionality like ifs and loops. Some of them will have different structures like MySQL will use concat and parentheses to concatenate things, whereas Microsoft SQL will use something else. You can, you know, you can use a plus sign to add things. It's just syntax difference. It basically makes them all sort of different languages. All of these things are known as a DBMS or database management system. 
So this whole time when we say database, what um, what we really mean is a database management system, like MySQL, PostgreSQL, um, all of Oracle SQL. These are actually DBMSs. They're not databases per se. More, it's a more accurate name for things like MySQL. It's basically the database is what's actually holding the information, and the DBMS is what lets us manage it. So the thing that's interpreting the SQL and the thing that is sort of presenting the data to us, that's the database management system. Basically, it's sort of a, an interface between sort of the humans and the data. Um, because the data is not necessarily represented in the way that you or I would be able to read it. That's where all the metadata comes in. It's basically the metadata tells the DBMS how to present the information to us. And then vice versa, when we say, you know, select everything from the DBMS is what translates that to uh, something the database can understand. So that's just something to know about that's a good definition because a lot of people will more accurately refer to, you know, if they're trying to pick, oh, do we need to use Postgres? Do we need to use uh, Sybase? They will, instead of saying, which database do we use? They'll say, which uh, DBMS do we use? And it should theoretically be possible to migrate one database to another. And in fact, if you're using Sybase, it may even be possible to connect it with MSSQL. Um, they use pretty similar nomenclature. So how do you connect to a database? So say, you know, you're working in Excel and your boss comes up and says, hey, I need you to get some data out of this database. You know, how do you do that? Well, that's where ODBC comes in. This is a huge thing. Some of you may or may not have heard of this. Um, it stands for Open Database Connectivity, which is not the best initialism in the world. It's basically a common set of commands that are used to connect one system to another. What does that mean? It essentially means that it's a common sort of translator to go from, say, Microsoft Excel to a MySQL database. Well, you can use that same ODBC driver to connect from Excel to a Postgres so these, you can use it to go from, you know, MSXQL to any of these, or you can go from MySQL to Numbers on the Mac or Excel from Microsoft, or you can't do this with Google Sheets yet. That's one of the big, big, big limitations of Google Sheets, except that this doesn't really happen that much anymore. Um, people aren't really connecting spreadsheets to databases. They're just doing database stuff directly. Anyway, basically, you think of it as like a driver. It's sort of the same type of thing that allows your computer to, to talk to a printer. You know, you install one driver on your PC and it lets your computer talk to a bunch of different printers. Drivers are a little bit different because usually you have a specific driver for each device, unless it's HP, that's one of the things they've done well. In this case, you install ODBC and it allows you to connect to a bunch of different databases. And they say it basically acts as middleware to connect things like Excel to databases. It's growing less necessary as time goes on because a lot of web apps and things connect directly. Like whenever I've worked with web applications, I've just directly connected to MySQL. You can log in to a MySQL server just like you can log into anything else. What ODBC does is it allows uh, Excel to make that kind of connection. But you can write web apps, you can use JavaScript or PHP to do that directly, so you don't need ODBC. So it's not really being worked on as much as it used to be. So I kind of already talked about this. Google Sheets doesn't currently su support connecting to a database. Excel does, but it's complicated and it can be pricey because the ODBC connectors that will work with Excel aren't free. That's one of the reasons why I'm not showing this, um, because I didn't want to pay for it, and I especially don't want you guys to pay for it. If you ever need to do this, usually an uh, administrator or IT professional will set it up for you, um, and Microsoft then offers a query wizard that'll help you build queries if you ever need to do it. So rather than looking at those select statements that, that we were looking at, odds are you'll be doing it in Excel, and Excel offers a wizard that'll help you build these things so I think it's fun I think it's exciting I think it's cool stuff to know so that's why I'm sharing it and I mean if you get into working with web pages or if you get a job where you're working with developers and you know some stuff about queries it'll make your life easier and it'll make their life easier and it'll make everybody's you know relationships with one another a little bit better